And you talked about the number of cases that you close, mm. the vast majority, we'll say 60 to 70% yeah. that you're going to close. Can you just talk me through the time frame? Because yeah. when you receive that letter yeah. and the horror that that invariably is met mm. with by the member, what they then tell me about is that the great distress of the length of time, and I know you've worked hard to yeah. try and reduce that time, but can you just talk me through the average time frame? I can. Well, let me take this in two parts. I, I said earlier that um, we are what's called a creature of statute. That means much of what we do is actually governed by an act of parliament. Uh, the first one was 1858, the most recent one, 1983, and we're answerable to parliament. 1983, remember, Leslie's pre-internet, pre-email, Mobile phones were probably the size of a brick. So you used to send e uh, rather e telegrams and faxes. Yeah, and faxes and handwritten and put a stamp on it. Now, much of what we do is prescribed by an act of parliament written at that time for around 350 cases a year. My predecessor, Lord Walton, who recently died, heard every case personally, one a day. Now we're getting nine or 10,000. So that act doesn't really fit for purpose. But the point of discussing that is that if you do everything that's required of you in that as fast as you possibly can, and we, the GMC does their bit as fast as they can, and the doctor replies promptly, and their defence organisation in the hospital, it's, it's a minimum six months. You can't do it faster than that. Um, if there's a police investigation, it's far longer because we don't start until the police finish. So the second part of my answer is to try and get around that, we've been developing something called provisional inquiries, which is where a senior examiner looks at a case and thinks, if we could get one witness statement, or actually if we could get hold of this person's CV, perhaps we could dismiss this very quickly. We just need a single piece of evidence. And that group, that subgroup of cases, we've managed to reduce from about six months to six weeks. Uh, but it doesn't apply to all of them. If it's a complex case where you'd need several witness statements or you need an expert uh, obstetrician and gynaecologist like yourself to give a view on the person's practice, it, it could end up being six months or longer, depending how complex it is. And you mentioned the importance of the um, individual who's been complained about mm -hmm. responding quickly. So is that a pattern of behaviour that you see that often people contribute to the waiting problems because they're not answering, possibly because they're frightened or mm -hmm. they don't know what to say? Well, look, Leslie, we, we're as, we, I don't want to imply we're not part of this. So the GMC sometimes gets it wrong and introduces delays. But equally well, we're not the only party. Definitely doctors, I, if I think back to my own cases, it's frightening. You're perhaps a bit paralyzed initially. You talk to a colleague. You're in denial. In denial. You talk to your medi medical defense organization. If you're a member of one, about 13% or 15% of doctors who come before a tribunal are not a member of a defense organization. So they're perhaps wondering, where will I get advice? Then there's the delay. They sometimes delay getting information from the hospital, say you've got to get copies of hospital records or you've got to track somebody down who no longer works at the address where the patient's complaining about. And all of these things can introduce delays. So the, but, but we're not immune from that. We all need, I think, to work harder to try and do it as quickly as possible. Um, but, but yeah, sometimes doctors do introduce delays for sure as well as us.